Christians are starving in the United States. We have to feed the hungry. The physically hungry, the spiritually hungry, we have to feed them. That's why we're here. We need to introduce people to Jesus and we need to feed them when they arrive. That's who we need to be. And we'll never do it if it's all about us. We have to all agree in one thing if we're going to move forward and it is that we have to commit ourselves entirely to following Jesus. God has to be first and only in our loyalty. He has to again become the one for whom, in whom, and through whom we live. The writer of the Hebrews describes what the life of the community of faith should look like. And for the writer of Hebrews, followers of Jesus at least share three principal qualities. Followers of Jesus are vulnerable, deliberately vulnerable. Followers of Jesus are biblically, biblical, intentionally biblical. And followers of Jesus are submitted, intentionally submitted. If you have those Bibles with you, I'll invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13 verse 1. Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. Remember those in prison as if you were there yourself. Remember also those being mistreated as if you felt their pain in your own bodies. Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Now, when I talk about vulnerability, what I mean is that we need to make our, we need to put ourselves at risk. That's what Christians do. We put ourselves at risk. We are not first committed to being safe. We're not first committed to being prosperous. We're not first committed to being happy. We are first committed to being vulnerable, to putting ourselves at risk for the sake of the gospel. Show hospitality to strangers. That's a vulnerable act, isn't it? But we cannot follow Jesus and live another way. We cannot follow Jesus and live another way. Showing hospitality to strangers. Remembering those in prison. Now the scholars tell us that we're probably talking about those who are in prison for their faith. But I think it can extend further than that. And I know many in the tradition of the church have said the same. But we need to remember those in prison. Do we visit those? who are incarcerated. We have to remember those who are mistreated and we have to behave as though their pains are our pains. We have to remain faithful to our marriage commitments. You might say, what does that have to do with vulnerability? Well, anyone facing marital strife knows that it has everything to do with marital faithfulness because to stay in the same marriage and not just jump ship when things get tough, you're going to have to be excessively vulnerable and you're going to be at risk to being hurt again and again. You know that. Not talking about physical abuse and criminal behavior. That is something the government should step in to stop. And we are to live as a community, not simply as individuals. We are not to love money and seek our protection from it. If we live in this vulnerable lifestyle of the gospel, we may find ourselves giving away more than we are keeping, and that might put us at risk. All of this is to say that Christians are deliberately vulnerable. That's just another way of saying that Christians are deliberately a community. That we deliberately involve other people in our lives. That we deliberately involve ourselves in the lives of others. This is what it means to be Christian. And yet the church has so emphasized individual Christian faith that many of us are under the impression you can follow Jesus on your own. This is a quotation from Marvin Wilson's book, Our Father Abraham. Wilson says this, The community-centered focus of the church, as described in Scripture, is now in danger of being replaced by the rugged individualism of a private kind of faith. The church is responsible for bringing this danger upon itself. Let us think for a moment. Could it be that we have so stressed the freedom of conscience before God, the individual priesthood of the believer, the importance of personal devotions, 
the right of each person to interpret the Bible privately, the priority of private confession of sin directly to God, and the encouragement of independent churches and separatistic autonomous parachurch agencies. Could it be we have so stressed these things that we have come to believe that we can function not only in these but also in other areas as self-sufficient believers? We're called to love our neighbors as ourselves. We must participate. And if we're going to move into this next season together, we're going to have to commit ourselves to being a community. We're called to love and participate. We are to be not simply a vulnerable people, but a biblical people. When you find these words, I'm not going to read the whole passage, but verse 7, the next verse says, Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Now, when it says, remember the leaders who taught you the word, we're not talking about your grandmother or your grandfather. We're not talking about your dad or your neighbor or your friend who led you to Jesus. If you read that in, let's read it out. Okay, that's not what the writer of Hebrews is talking about. There's one group of people who passed on the story of the gospel to us. And no matter who told you the gospel, they wouldn't have had it without this group. It's the prophets and apostles of Jesus who wrote the scriptures. That's what he's talking about. Remember the folks who wrote the scriptures, who preserved the testimony of Jesus, who preserved the life of Israel with God, who preserved the ministry of Jesus for future generations. Remember those leaders. Think of the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. This means read the book of Acts. Look at the life of Paul. Look at the life of Peter. Look at the life of John. See how they lived their lives and notice how they sacrificed and the choices and decisions they made. This is what Hebrews is saying. And so we cannot be the people of God if we are not first a biblical people. There is no way to be Christian and to forsake the prophets and the apostles of Israel. You can relate with him personally, but it will be through them. So we must be a biblical people. And finally, we must be a submitted people. Verse 17 says this, Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. Let me say this quickly. Certainly where to test the spirits. The Bible has a whole lot to say about false teachers. And if me or any other leader anywhere is teaching us to go against the words and teachings of Jesus, to violate the spirit of the intentions of the prophets and apostles, you should walk away. You should put them out. You should fire them. You should vote them out. You should do any of the, That's what the scriptures say. But short of that, we are people who are intentionally a submitted people. So the Greek word here translated obey is an interesting one. Because what it actually means, the word is peso. And peso means to persuade. What this says is allow yourself to be persuaded to follow leaders. Allow yourself to be persuaded to follow leaders. And it doesn't say spiritual leaders in the Greek. It just says leaders. But the translators of the New Living Translation believe that the context is the church, which is why they added that word. But you can, so you decide. I'll just read it. You decide what it means. But I will say this. There's no following God if we're not a submitted people. Obey your spiritual leaders, or just your leaders, and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls, and they're accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. It begins with our first caregivers in the law of Moses, with our parents, this principle. And the writer of Hebrews says it follows into all of our lives with those in authority over us. So as we move into this next season, it needs to be less about us and more about others. And so it's, start, it's time to start praying for the wayward. And it's time to start testifying. It's time to start sharing our faith in deliberate ways. This is the season we're entering into and we're ready. You are ready. You have all that you need. Are you ready? Shall we begin?